At 6 p.m. on Christmas Day here in Korea, thank you for joining us. This is Daniel Che for Arirang News. Pope Francis celebrated Christmas Eve with a traditional late-night mass on Wednesday in St. Peter's Basilica. He even made a call to a tent camp in Ankawa in northern Iraq, which houses mostly Christian refugees escaping the onslaught of Islamic State militants. He told them they were like Jesus, forced to flee because there was no place for them. Francis also urged them to help their fellow Muslim citizens present a more authentic image of Islam as a religion of peace. And through a video message addressed to all Koreans, the 78-year-old pontiff recalled with joy and gratitude his visit to Korea in August and wished all a peaceful and holy Christmas. Now, while many joyously celebrate the Christmas holiday with friends and family, that's a luxury beyond reach in some parts of our world. Our Che Yusan takes us to some of these conflict regions where all they want for Christmas is peace. Jerusalem's Latin Patriarch, the region's Latin Catholic Church Archbishop, recently visited the Gaza Strip, blocked by Israel since 2007. He spent some time with local Christians who are unable to travel to Bethlehem for Christmas festivities amid ongoing clashes. From Gaza, we ask the whole world to feel with us and look to our situations. Do not forget Gaza. Over in Bethlehem, Christians gather for the last Sunday Mass before Christmas. While preparations were underway for the festive season, the worshippers remember their fellow Christians in prayers. We wish that our relatives and friends from around the world will come to Bethlehem to celebrate Christmas. Several hundred kilometers north in Lebanon, Iraqi Christians who fled from the oppression of Islamic State militants prayed for peace in the region. We hope the situation in our country will improve, but it is impossible. We can't go back. We left our houses, our possessions. In the conflict-torn eastern Ukraine, a convoy of trucks from Russia arrives, carrying humanitarian aid and something special for the Christmas holiday. The special thing about this convoy is that we are not only taking aid, but also presents. We are taking presents, Christmas trees and the mood, a New Year mood. But more than the trees and the presents, the biggest holiday gift for the people in conflict regions around the world would be a sense of stability and precious time spent with loved ones. Che Yusan, Arirang News. During this holiday season, even a small gesture of love can mean the world to someone in need. With that in mind, some local groups are reaching out to spread the holiday cheer. Our Sun Jung In has this report. The city streets warm up with a delightful Christmas carol ringing through the cold air. The song is coming from a fire truck that has transformed into a Santa mobile decorated with Christmas lights and cute little trees. Firefighters have become Santa Claus for the day, attracting people as they pass by the cheering crowd. The brutal fire truck arrives at a children's hospital with a very important mission, handing out gifts to the young patients. Their faces light up at Santa's unexpected visit. When kids think of firefighters, the first thing that comes to mind is a strong, charismatic figure. We wanted to take the opportunity to reach out to kids in a more friendly way. The audience at this theater has come to learn more about the women who were forced into sexual slavery and their lives after Korea's liberation from Japanese colonial rule. The troupe accepted diamond noodle packages instead of money for admission. And the donations collected will be given to people in need. I decided to come here because I thought it was a meaningful way to help out the poor by donating ramyun. The event was organized by regional acting clubs and troops in the country. We are going to give all the noodles to people in need at the end of the year. We decided to hold this event to make our society a better place to live. 
From Santa firefighters visiting children's hospitals to acting troops that donate ramen noodles to the poor, they have come up with their own unique ways of lighting up the community during this festive season. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Is it about making a stand on freedom of speech, or is it just about daring to poking fun, daring to poke fun at one of the most dangerous regimes around the world? Well, regardless, the movie interview has been catching the eye of the world, and this controversial comedy plot about assassinating North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. Sony Pictures released that movie online on Christmas Eve, a day before its limited rollout in U.S. theaters. And our Park Ji Won tells us more about this phenomenon. Despite threats of attack, some 300 theaters in the U.S. have decided to screen the interview on Christmas Day as originally scheduled. The figure, however, is less than 10 percent of the total number of theaters Sony Pictures had originally expected for its wide release. That's because major movie chains have backed down on showing the film after terror threats from North Korea. The very reason Sony previously canceled the film's theatrical release earlier this month. But many art house and small independent theaters in support of the film petitioned Sony to allow them to screen it on the grounds that it symbolizes freedom of expression. Obviously, we'd like to make money off of the movie, as we would with any movie, but uh, it's important to take a stand about freedom of, uh, freedom of speech, freedom to see movies. Uh, I think that's, that's mainly what it's about. For moviegoers, it may just be a matter of finding entertainment at the theater. I thought it was interesting. I bought a ticket. I don't have any political views. I couldn't care less. Freedom of speech. Um, I think it is what it is, you know, people make such a big deal out of it. Christmas is a day there isn't much to do anyway, and we thought it was also a good thing to do because we don't feel that the threat was an appropriate thing and probably not very effective. The FBI has heightened the security by reaching out to hundreds of theaters, screening the movie to warn of any potential threats. Ahead of this, Sony Pictures put the interview online on Christmas Eve through streaming services like Google Play and YouTube Movies. Meanwhile, Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency reported on Thursday that in response, North Korea's diplomat to the United Nations, Kim Sung, said that while Pyongyang rejects its release both on and offline, it will not take any physical action. Kim also reiterated that North Korea was not involved in the recent Sony Pictures hacking. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Well, the chairman of the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee has introduced a bill calling for strengthening sanctions on North Korea. According to diplomatic sources, Senator Robert Menendez introduced the North Korea Sanctions Enforcement Act of 2014 earlier this month. It follows similar legislation introduced in the House in July. Mostly symbolic, the bills are expected to be scrapped with Congress coming to an end. But such moves still carry weight, as it suggests further legislation can be pursued in a bipartisan manner when the new Congress comes in. Plus, Washington has vowed to punish Pyongyang after the FBI determined the reclusive regime was behind the Sony cyber attack. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has hosted the first gathering of supply and support troops in two decades in a move aimed at strengthening its grip on the military. The North's state-run Korean Central News Agency said the meeting of logistics personnel of the Korean People's Army marked a major change and provided an important landmark for efforts to enhance the supply and service field of the military. The event was also reportedly attended by Defense Minister Han yong chul the chief of the KPA General Staff, Lee Myung-gil, and Lee young gil rather, and other high-ranking officials. Today is the day the hackers threatened to launch a second round of attacks against Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Corporation if they did not shut down three reactors. So far, officials say there are no signs of infiltration. Our Kim Yeon bin reports. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy and state-run Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Corporation conducted four inspections this morning, but found no signs of hackings as of yet. However, officials say they will maintain a state of emergency 24 hours a day until the situation is resolved. The suspected attackers threatened to leak 100,000 pages of data on the nation's nuclear facilities and conduct a second wave of cyber attacks unless the Kori-1, Kori-3 and Warsong-3 nuclear reactors are shut down for three months, starting on Christmas Day. 
The ministry says there is a possibility it's not a bluff, as information has already been leaked on five different occasions. Since last Monday, the hackers revealed 85 documents, including blueprints and internal information on the facilities. The KHMP manages a total of 23 local nuclear reactors, which supply around 30 percent of the country's electricity needs. But authorities say that even if the hackers conduct another attack, they do not believe it will have a significant impact on Korea's power supply. The three reactors account for around 2.3 million kilowatts, which could be covered by Korea's 10 million kilowatts of backup power. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Korea's international balance of payments in the cultural and leisure sector for this year is expected to be in the black for the first time in 12 years. The Bank of Korea on Thursday said the nation raked in 767 million U.S. dollars from January to October, topping last year's record high of some 740 million dollars. Officials say most of the revenue came from exports of Korean movies, TV dramas, and K-pop, which are popular in Asia and gaining momentum elsewhere. Korea's export revenue in the cultural industry has increased more than 20-fold in just just the past 10 years. Another black teenager has been shot dead by a white police officer in a St. Louis suburb on Christmas Eve, setting off a new round of protests near Ferguson. But this time, the teen was armed and dangerous. Surveillance video from a gas station where the incident occurred shows 18-year-old Antonio Martin pointing a handgun at the officer. St. Louis County Police Chief John Belmer said the 34-year-old Berkeley policeman fired several shots, fearing for his life, adding the teen did not comply with the request to drop the gun. The officer, meanwhile, wasn't wearing a body camera he had been issued. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon defended police, saying that law enforcement officers have a difficult and often dangerous job in protecting themselves and law-abiding citizens. And now the weather dress warm when you head out to work on Friday morning as the mercury is forecast to dip all the way down to minus 7 in Seoul. Let's check out the weather conditions outside of Korea around the world. Well, thank you for watching. That brings us to the end of our newscast. We do have more coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time. Do join us then. From all of us here at Arirang, have a Merry Christmas.